All right, Karibu Sana. And in case you're just joining us, we have shifted gears now. We are talking about Matters Health on this uh, month that we are creating awareness around mental uh, health. And of course, uh, we will be talking to two gentlemen uh, who have a lot that they are going to be sharing with us, not <coughs> just, uh, about how men should also be sensitive to the significance of uh, being sensitive to their mental health, but also just in general, in case you're watching this program, what you need to do, what you need to know, what you need to be concerned about, the significance of counseling, and of course even how much we are spending as a country when it comes to just addressing this issue that is becoming a crisis in this uh, generation. I'm talking about uh, Anthony Mutua. Anthony Mutua is a mental health coach. Thank you for creating time. And we also have with us Dr. Alfred Gitonga, consultant uh, psychiatrist. Seven years of experience, Dr. Chari, just doing this and dealing with a lot, including matters of depression. And I was just looking at what you've been able to achieve so far. And I said, you know, it's good that we have both of you on board uh, just to talk about this very important uh, conversation. But let me begin with... Um, Anthony, Anthony, you have a very interesting uh, story of how you got into uh, mental health awareness and in this world of being a mental health coach. Take us through why this topic is at the center of what you're fo focusing on. Why is it close to your heart? Um, <clears throat> I would say that uh, uh, personally, I've, I've been interacting with a lot of uh, people, and uh, especially in my social circles, mm -hmm. uh, bus in business <coughs> uh, circles. And uh, interacting with the people a lot, and also family, family. I've come to find that we've been, people have been struggling. People have really been struggling, and struggling inside. Um, I can say personally, if I would want to bring it closer home, that personally, as a business person, as a parent, uh, it's, it's not been easy just to be able to balance all these three, balancing the business, balancing the social life, uh, family. And uh, through this, you find that um, as a man, it's, it's, it's been quite a struggle. And you find yourself getting into anxiety and stress and uh, not being able to, to, to have someone to speak to or not being able to give yourself to look for somebody that you can speak to, somebody you can share your, 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 your struggles, somebody you can share what you are going through. And I think I can say, uh, as, a, as, a, as a man, uh, stress which will lead to mental, mental health um, disorders and, uh, and the trauma, for a man it will even start as a, I have a kid in a kindergarten, but what is la running in my mind is how is that child going to go through the university? Mm -hmm. And just by that, I'm, I'm getting stressed. It, it is stressing me up. It is working me up. What does that do? It affects my, my production at work. It affects my business. It will lead me to, 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 to get stressed and the interaction with my social life, then it leads to issues with my own family mm -hmm. and how I run my life. <clears throat> and um, I think by doing that is how I, I, I came to see, and even as I, um, I, I, I talk to my peers and my friends, I would see this in most of, of the people that, that I spent time with. Mm -hmm. And that is how I came, I started this journey. All right. So it began from, you know, what you were going through personally. Yes. And now you even saw that it was not just you. It, yes. was, it was around you. People yes. are going through the same thing. Yes. People don't understand how to go about exactly. their mental health. Uh, Dr. Ari, why is this time significant? Why should we be sensitive to this particular subject from where you sit? Thank you very much, Safin uh, and uh, Citizen TV for having me on the show today. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, we have seen a lot of media reports uh, in the recent past that have caused a lot of alarm amongst the public where we have seen uh, incidences of femicides where men have killed or ladies are dying at the hands of men. Mm -hmm. And also we have seen uh, suicide levels reported amongst men that are in the obscene numbers. For example, the World Health Organization states that uh, the suicide rate in Kenya is that we have four deaths by suicide every single day. And of those four deaths by suicide every single day, 
we find that a majority of the people who are dying by suicide, not committing suicide, they die by suicide, are men. And uh, looking at the rates of uh, suicide comparatively between men and women, we find that the, rate, the suicide rate in men is uh, three times higher than that of the females, where we have 12.9 uh, men per 100,000 who are committing suicide, or dying by suicide, sorry. And then we have only 4.9 uh, women per 100,000 of the population who have died by suicide. So the direction points towards uh, an unequal uh, lean towards the male gender as far as uh, these detrimental con conditions are concerned. Mm -hmm. Why do you think the men are more vulnerable to uh, you know, uh, such uh, mental uh, uh, health challenges? Okay, uh, I will speak on that uh, by touting that uh, the African male has uh, traditionally been uh, the one who bears a bit, of, uh, a bit more of the yoke of uh, provision for our families. So we have won the cultural norms and expectations that our society has bestowed upon the Kenyan male. Number two is that uh, we have a lot of stigma uh, when it comes to men being emotionally uh, vulnerable. So men are not easy to release or talk about what issues might be disturbing them at the back of their minds. And that leads to a condition where we have uh, underreported cases of male mental illness and uh, also that has interfered with their access to mental health services because the stigma stands in the way of uh, open access. So that's where we stand as far as uh, uh, um, the predominance of mental health issues amongst men. Mm -hmm. Number three is that uh, we have financial difficulties amongst uh, all of Kenya in particular, but particularly uh, we have 10% unemployment in Kenya, which is the highest number in East Africa. And of that, 40% of the youth are currently unemployed. Mm -hmm. This uh, financial distress is leading to a lot of stress. And then normal sequence of events is that once you have high levels of stress, the high levels of stress already lead to a mental uh, imbalance of your neurochemicals, and that starts the cacophony of events that will lead to uh, anxiety. And once you get into an anxious state, then you are predisposed to all the other uh, issues that come downstream, such as uh, depression. Depression leads to suicide, and uh, that is why we have uh, such high numbers of. Uh, male mental health issues in the country. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the same, the, the same issue though, Mutua? You interact with men a lot, and uh, what are they telling you in terms of their, um, their, their, their coping mechanisms when it comes to stress and issues they are facing, and even the issues of uh, stigma that, that, mm -hmm. that, that comes with a man who um, you know, opens up about the issues they are going through? What are men telling you about how this is affecting them? Um, <clears throat> I think one, one of the biggest issue with us men is that uh, one, for a man, uh, we, we are wired to, we are like, we, we, we look for solutions. That is how a man is wired, mm. is, is about finding for a solution. And um, anxiety, yes, is good to a certain level. And uh, stress also to a certain level because it is one of the processes of looking, getting a solution. But now the problem comes when you are not able to manage you are not able to balance that. And uh, as a man, I'll feel sometimes very difficult to approach another man, to speak to them and tell them about what I'm going through. Because you will feel like you are, like you, you, you are not doing good. You will feel looked down. You will feel that uh, uh, you feel like I am not the man I'm supposed to be. And, and there is this thing that has been, has, has been put in us as we were growing up that a man should always keep to yourself, keep it. Be a man. Be a man. Pambana, ngangana. You know, ngangana. You know, mwanaume ni kungangana. And you see, at that time, unangangana and you are struggling inside. Unangangana, you are struggling inside. You, you step out, you are showing a very brave face. But inside, you are breaking down. And as you are breaking down, all the systems, you know, our brain is like a computer of a car. When it is one thing is not working, it affects different parts of, 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 your, of your self being. And um, I, I think for me, the, how I came to get to a space is by, as I enrolled to Amani Counseling and Training Center, mm -hmm. where I'm studying. And uh, finding counselors, and you find yourself uh, in a counseling, a therapy room, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. with a person that you will share, a person who, is, uh, who, who will not judge you, somebody who is ready to listen to you. Mm -hmm. I think that is the first step. And uh, because I, 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 we are not ready just to sit down, apart from the time we might sit down, we'll sit down in the club, which is not bad. <laughs> but you see, uh, we, that, that sometimes we don't see, we sit because of what is going inside us. It is a coping mechanism that we are trying to look so that we can deal with what, what we are going through so and which leads to uh, maladaptive behaviors. Yeah. So, so as we, we are trying to, we are t that is a source of finding a coping mechanism of what we are going through inside ourselves. All right. Yes. Before we get to that point where we'll talk about um, even the significance of counseling, I talk about counseling and men. They don't belong in the same sentence. I don't know how you're going to crack that. Mm. But then that is why we are having this conversation, just to talk about how to make that happen. But Dr. Ari, what are the telltale signs that somebody is beginning to have mental health challenges? He said a bit of stress and anxiety is okay, is healthy, but how do you get to realize that now you are stepping into the, the red zone, the danger zone? Okay, so the signs and symptoms of mental illness are varied and uh, they work across different domains. Yeah. There may be behavioral cues that is uh, noticed behavior that, uh, and uh, some of them are, uh, sleeping too much or sleeping too little, eating too much or eating too little. There is a change in the emotional well-being where somebody has a very high uh, mood or elated and uh, excited or somebody is extremely low, that's what, what we call depression. When somebody is feeling that they are worthless, they don't deserve to be alive and life has lost meaning. There is a isolation and uh, when people who are socially oriented keep to themselves and uh, uh, choose to isolate and, uh, and uh, they are no longer available to, for social events. And there's uh, something we call anhedonia in mental health is where the things that you used to enjoy previously no longer give you any joy. Yeah. And uh, we have, uh, when the disturbance becomes extreme, people go into what we call malad maladaptive coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And I will mention one of them which is closely related to what we are discussing is issues like substance abuse, drug and substance abuse. We have uh, uh, exceedingly alarming numbers of drug and substance abuse, which are as a result of uh, people trying to cope with the mental uh, turmoil. And then look at something as pervasive as uh, recreational risk taking, such that is gambling. Uh, well, many men have taken to gambling as an outlet for social pressure and also as an avenue to try and make uh, a buck here and there. The downstream effects of this activity are so dire that uh, we need to have a reevaluation mm. because as a result of gambling, where we have 2.3% uh, prevalence rate of gambling disorder in any population, mm. those are the international Gambling numbers. is also a disorder. Mark it's a disorder. Yeah. It's also a mental disorder. That uh, if we approximate using that number, we have approximately 1 million individuals who are addicted to gambling and they have gambling disorder. Now, a study done by... Uh, uh, Professor David Ndetei of the Africa Mental Health Research Foundation, which was as recent as last year, 2023, mm. amongst the 536 uh, students of colleges, universities, and high schools, found that the prevalence of gambling disorder amongst that cohort was 11%. And uh, if we look at the national figures, we can extrapolate that to the country. And uh, why I'm concerned about gambling is because of the causative uh, effect that it has. It precipitates nicotine dependency at 60%. Mm -hmm. We have substance use, and the substances we are talking about here are alcohol, cannabis, and uh, cut. At 57% uh, of gamblers are dependent on a, a substance of some sort. And then the mental health effect of that is that we have 37% of them getting mood disorders, and another 37% of them getting anxiety disorders. So. They are trying to cope with mental turmoil, but getting into worse and worse scenarios. Let me get something clear. Which one comes first? Is it the mental health disorder that leads somebody to, to go into gambling, or it's, it's, is it the gambling that you know, results in the mental health disorder? The two are interrelated, intertwined. intertwined. That uh, it could be a relief from distress. Yes. Because recreation relieves distress. Unfortunately, people are getting to involved in gambling to the point that it is interfering with themselves. 
and that is where we come in. We have noticed too many cases of substance abuse, nicotine dependency, mood disorders, anxiety disorders from a very good activity, which could have, uh, if moderated, could not harm the individual. Now, let me talk about the economic cost of uh, this poor mental health to this country. In 2021, we worked on a document called the Mental Health Investment Case at the Ministry of Health, supported by the UN and the WHO. And this is what we realized, that the cost of poor mental health to the economy of Kenya through things like early mortality, presenteeism and absenteeism. Presenteeism means you're at work, but you're not performing at your most mm. efficient capacity. The cost of that was 62 billion shillings in 2020. Mm. In the year 2020, poor mental health cost the economy of this republic 60 billion. Of that 60 billion, 55 billion came from uh, lost productivity. And then the other 5 billion was because of direct health expenditure by people seeking care for mental health conditions. Mm -hmm. That figure, 60 billion, is 0.6% of the GDP of the country as at that point in time. We cannot continue having such a costly environment where mental health costs the economy 0.6% of its GDP. We need a redirection, we, yeah. a redirection and uh, it should be taken seriously that uh, there is no health without mental health. Yeah, true. Um, seems like it's not just a health concern. It's mm. even becoming now an economic <coughs> concern. If you talk about 62 billion, just losing that because of not addressing the mental health issues, then that's something that we should be concerned about. Um, Anthony, what are the real issues on the ground in terms of what people are dealing with? Is it just money? that seems to be like the biggest driver of most of the uh, cases of mental illnesses. So there, could, there are other things as well that also we should be sensitive to as some of the causes of mental is illnesses. I would say money, yes, money, no. <clears throat> but because there are very many drives to money because the process of getting the money is one of the causes because the drive of making money, the drive of wanting to succeed, the drive we get from peer pressure, because I want to have what he has. I want, to, I want my business to do like his. That by itself drives you to want to achieve that. And also you'll find the relationships that we have around us in our homes and in, the, in our own families, even people at our homes, because in our social, uh, surroundings. We have also people who have, who have mental disorders by themselves. By these people, if we are related, in themselves they will affect me. So there are very many drives that drive. Now, for example, you can say like during the time of COVID, from that time there are very many issues that have not been resolved. There are very many issues people are going through that they have never processed. People lost jobs. People lost friends and families. People, people, businesses were closed down. There are very many people who, are, who still have that in them even today. And all that is projecting in their lives. All that is projecting in their current businesses, wherever they are. It is projecting in their, in their homes. It is affecting the family. Communication between me and my wife will become a problem. Why? Not maybe because of her or me, because of a burden I'm carrying. And I think even as, um, as I'm, I'm studying um, psychology counseling, I've come also to understand that what is the biggest drive is my childhood. Our childhood will affect our character and how we are able to cope up with stress and anxiety at, 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 at the level that we are now. And it is very important, especially for our parents, to come and know that. The caregiver that is in your child at the earlyhood stages, between the ages of between zero and six, seven there, it is very important for this person in their productivity when they become an adult. Mm -hmm. Because that is, from that is when now you learn how to deal with this stress, how you deal with the anxieties. And all these things start projecting from, from the time now, from like me when I'm here. There are very many things I've come to learn that my childhood affects how I relate to people, how I, how I deal with stress. That comes from how I was brought up, from my caretaker, from my, my caregiver and my parenting. Before you knew better, now yes. that you're studying counseling, yes. before you got into that space, how did you 
understand mental um, you know health and how did you use to deal or cope with 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 the, the challenges that you were experiencing before you knew better I'd, I'd, um as, as, as I was growing up, just like every other person, mm -hmm. I think when counseling comes to mind to everybody, we look at it from an, somebody who is battling addiction, somebody who is uh, dealing with uh, mental uh, marriage issues, mm -hmm. or, um, or, a death, or a death and loss. You see, that is the only thing that we, we all think is about counseling. And uh, that has been there. And for me, it's just to bring it out that it is not about that. It is even about my performance at work, my colleagues, how I relate with my colleagues at work. That is an issue that needs to take you for counseling. Mm. That is an issue that needs to take you for therapy. Okay. If, if I'm just seated, I've, I've come in to learn that even losing a phone can cause you depression. Mm -hmm. Just a simple thing as losing a phone will yeah, cause you depression. True. Even leaving the phone at home. Yes. Leaving, eh, leaving the phone at home, <laughs> it, sometimes it brings a lot of problems. <laughs> and, and you see again, this something like uh, when our children are transiting, a child is transiting from, from secondary to college, from primary to secondary. There is a lot of changes that happens in this child. There is a change of environment. There is a lot of things. If it is not handled well, and for me as a parent, I've come to learn to know how to handle these children. My children are different stages of life. I will want to bring, take my child to go to the UK for further studies. But is this child prepared to deal with the changes that will happen in his life when he's there? Most of the parents, I'll tell you no. We just pack and we take them. Mm. Then after some time, the child is down with addiction. The child is down with depression. Why? Because of that, all that. He, he, there is a, the change in his environment, the change of losing, leaving friends behind, leaving the parents to a new environment. Yeah. Only by that yeah. will bring stress, will bring depression. All right. Mm. That, that is something that is, you know, quite eye-opening. I never really mm. thought about it in that perspective, Dr. You know, just thinking mm. about um, how life changes can affect our mindset and our state of the mental health? Uh, I would like to, uh, of course, add uh, some impetus to what uh, Mutua has said right now. And uh, you have mentioned depression quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought it uh, justifiable that I just speak about happiness. Mm -hmm. Depression is low mood and unhappiness. Uh, and uh, according to the World Happiness Index, 60% uh, of Kenyans are unhappy. As of 2023, out of 146 countries, Kenya was number 111. Mm. So we have tried because in 2021 we were number number. I mean, in 2020 we were number 121 out of 146. Which but is it, still not good. It not looks like uh, <laughs> over the course of the last three yeah. years we have improved dramatically, and now we are number 111 out of 146. Mm. The reason I'm talking about depression is because, according to the World Health Organization, 4.4 of our population suffers from depression. Mm. And if I give you that in uh, quantifiable numbers, we're looking at an approximate number of around 2.2 .2 million people. 2.2 .2 million. When you mention the word depression, it just hit me in the mind to uh, just bring it out as that it is the condition that is sucking life out of people. Mm. And uh, when we talk about depression. So 60% of Kenyans are not happy. 60% of Kenyans are not happy. So that, does that mean that uh, th th that percentage, they have depression or a, a, a big chunk of it? I, I would suppose that a big chunk of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were analyzed Why on- Why are you not happy? Should I even <laughs> just ask that question? Why are you not happy if you're watching? 60% of Kenyans are not happy. That's an interesting statistic. Yes. Now, projections have it this way. The Global Burden of Disease studied by the World Health Organization stated that as of 2004, the leading cause of death and disability in the world mm. was lower respiratory, lower respiratory tract infections, chest infections, followed by diarrhea diseases, and finally, we had uh, depressive conditions. Now, the projection moving forward from today is that as of 2030, the leading cause of disability and illness in the world will be depression followed by, uh, road, uh, by ischemic heart diseases, like heart attacks and things like that, and finally road traffic accidents. So when you mentioned depression, it's rang a bell in my head 
to let Kenyans know that the leading cause of death and disability in the years to come will be depression. Mm. And you need to focus on that. How do we avoid that very grim future, Anthony? How do we save ourselves from getting to that space where we are going to allow depression run our lives? I believe it has already even started. If you look at what is happening in, in the country right now and the news that we are receiving left, right and center from relationships to what is happening to the young people, mm. the, the rates of infections among the youth, mm. how do we save ourselves for the future that is coming? Speaking, looking for help. Speaking and looking for help. Looking That's for help. Point. Looking. Yeah. Just find somebody. Find somebody. And, and, and I, I want to encourage uh, my... Basically everyone, both the, the, the ladies and the men. But you know, one thing I say about about our women is that them they open up. <laughs> Tukienda kwa chama tunajifungua, tunajifungua. Even I will say, you know, my husband. Imagine him piga suti ya subui, pasi amemwagia chai. Then lazima niende. You see, you learn to you learn to get it out. You get it out of your chest. But for us men, we will hold on to something. We will bottle up a lot of issues inside us. We bottle them up, we bottle them up. And I will walk out here looking confident, looking, but inside nothing is working. We need to look for help. We need to go, just find, go for therapy. If you feel I don't have somebody I can speak to, there you will get the, the, the confidentiality you need. You will get somebody who is non-judgmental, who is ready to listen to you. And sometimes, not sometimes, we have solutions to our own problems. We don't go to therapy to be given advice. We don't go to therapy to be guided. We go to therapy to be helped. That it is like, you unblock, because it's like the mind gets stuck. All the things that happen in you come to a point you get stuck. You need somewhere where you can be given that opportunity to open up, to open up and to get the solutions for yourself. That is all about therapy. It's easier said than done, especially when you're talking to people of your gender, mm -hmm. Dr. How do you identify these people to talk to? You know, because it's not just about going around talking to anyone, right? Yes. Not mm -hmm. everybody knows what to do when you come to them and you talk to them about issues you're going through. So how do you identify the right person to talk to? somebody who will actually offer solutions or, or help you in that journey? How do you get to that particular decision? Well, that is a very open question, but I will phrase it this way. Yeah. That uh, we, you need to find a qualified, and uh, we have currently what we call the Kenya uh, Counselors and Psychologists Association. They are professional associations that have their memberships online, where you can verify the name and the credibility of the person you're dealing with. So in the initial period when you feel a disturbance, I believe that uh, the doors open are usually f to go into a primary health care clinic and report your symptoms, upon where you will be referred to a secondary care uh, provider in case they decipher that what you're suffering from is a mental health condition. Let me give you an example of uh, primary health care and how it has helped us uh, uncover mental health conditions that people did not know, knew existed, and that is the point at which identification should be done at the primary health care level, the dispensary, the community, and the health center. Professor Modern Madayo of the Nairobi University last year, 2023, did a study where they were checking for the effectiveness of uh, antipsychotic, uh, antidepressant medication called fluoxetine together with psychotherapy for treating depression. Now, inadvertently, they uncovered in the study that Kenyans are a very traumatized lot. 35% of the patients or the people they queried in that study had PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And then a further 26% of them were found to have depression. Now, let me tell you something about mental health. Conditions co-occur together. Mm -hmm. Conditions marry each other. It is very possible to find somebody with depression having a substance use disorder. They are called comorbidities. Mm -hmm. Two conditions occurring at the same time in one individual. So we have a comorbidity a epidemic in this republic of mental health conditions because they're coming in pairs. You get? Mm -hmm. You get in somebody with anxiety has a sleep disorder. They cannot sleep at night. Those are two co-occurring things that need to be sorted out separately. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we say in medicine, comorbidity is the rule, 
rather than the exception. Mm -hmm. So I would like to encourage Kenyans to start seeking therapy and interventions for their mental health concerns. What if, what if they's, they've not gotten to that level of awareness to, he, to even know when they need to go to the facility or to get that diagnosis? What do they do at the basic level, at the household level? How do we deal with these issues? Okay. Yeah? I will give uh, one technical and one non-technical uh, answer to that. So uh, the Kenya Red Cross, uh, together with the Rotary Club of Nairobi Lovington, have come up with a free self-diagnosis portal where you can dial the number star 789 star 1199 hash. And once you dial those numbers, you will go through a series of questions that have every condition under mental health. Mm. And it will take you through a self-diagnosis procedure, at the end of which you will get results telling you whether you have a condition or not. It is free on your phone right now, you can try it. And at the back end of that, the mental health and psychosocial support team at the Kenya Red Cross, which is free, led by uh, Dorothy and Jury, are waiting to offer psychological first aid and sign point anybody who may be affected to the nearest point of care in the counties. So there's an intervention that is there already that is scientific for the population to check themselves. Now, when the World Health Organization did something we call the, uh, the reorganization of mental health services, they put self-care as the first point of entry for everybody. Yeah. So now initiative rests on the person, but they are parties and bodies that have brought out uh, diagnosis tools, simplified manner, on your phone as a USSD, where anybody in their houses in the whole country, because we thought it prudent that even the most basic phone can help you access that service, can get to know the prevailing conditions of, that they have within themselves mm -hmm. and seek care. Mm -hmm. That is one of them. All right. The second one is that uh, people are usually using a lot of social media these days. We have a 66% internet penetration. And uh, through the media, the internet is now available in every corner of this country. And I would encourage people to get online for learning purposes, not only entertainment. All right. And, and Anthony, I want you also to talk to me about the significance of reaching out to each other, checking on each other, having this very basic conversations about what's happening in your life, where are you at? Mm. How can that help us to save more lives from going down the drain of depression as well? Uh, that, 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 is, um, that is one of the most important things, I think. And uh, as you've asked, down from home, from home, just finding that person that I can share with what I'm going through. And, uh, and by doing that, we, we, we tend to prevent a lot of things that will happen. Just get that one person that you think you can trust. And let, let's start from the people around us. Look for somebody that you can confide with, somebody you can share. Just share anything, anything you feel you need to share. And out of that, if you get that person, you'll be able to open up. And that, I think, will, will help us to deal with some of these issues before they get to a place where now we'll need, again, medication. Because it starts as a simple thing as just anxiety. As simple as anxiety. And, and especially right now, as we are all talking about uh, high cost of living, that is in itself. It is enough to drive somebody down to depression. Mm -hmm. Just that in itself. And, and we'll just be talking about it, how Mambo Nimbaya, things are so bad. You see, when somebody is talking about that in their subconscious mind, it is slowly eating into them. Mm -hmm. And that now, you start looking at your life where you are, you start seeing how things are going, now you start seeing, seeing things are not working. But if you get to open to somebody, they will help you to start seeing life in a different way. Mm -hmm. Looking at uh, life and uh, just deciding in a way to, to deal with the uh, here and now, where am I now today, you know? Because sometimes it is not the now today, as, as I've mentioned. We are stressed by things even for the next, uh, or coming in the next that 10 years. Happen. Not even today. Today you might be having everything. Yeah. Everything, you have everything. But tomorrow becomes a problem to you. Mm. And that is why I, I, I again, Echo is, let's seek counseling. Mm. Let's seek counseling. What if those people you are seeking are also going through the same? Unambia mutu maisha ni nguwa, wambia by the way, it's kila mutu, it's everywhere, you know. Tujikaze, you know. Do we have a population that is also empowered to receive 
people and to be to offer grace and listen to them and encourage them or are we all bleeding uh, thank you Safin, for the <laughs> sentiments i would like to say and state that uh, we need to have a very honest conversation about mental health and i yeah. will start by being vulnerable myself you know we have uh, suffered personally close family members my friends yeah. my workmates and significant others that I know within my ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I have so many people who have expressed uh, concerns mm -hmm. for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I believe mental health is here with us. Each one of us knows somebody somewhere who might be suffering from a condition or other. There is somebody's son who has refused to go to school because they are in their bedrooms locked up because they take drugs. Mm -hmm. You have so much stress at your workplace and uh, probably your boss might be a bit mean and you are so overwhelmed and you have burnout and you have stress as a result. Mental health is now with us. It is everywhere. It is actually the person next to you. If they were very honest with you and you had an, a candid conversation, they have a personal concern or somebody that they know who is currently going through it. We have to be each other's keeper. Sorry to, di 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 divulge, I mean, uh, to, uh, to divert a bit. He mentioned subconscious mind and it rang a bell in me again. That uh, most of the things that disturb us in our quiet moments are things we have planted inside our subconscious mind. Now, the mind describes the entire circuitry of the brain and the physical brain itself. Everything that goes on in there is called the mind. Now, the mind is divided into two. 5% is the conscious mind which we use to walk around and do the things that we are doing, moving my hand and so on and so forth. We have 95% being subconscious and that one operates below conscious awareness. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is people are planting so much negative stuff in their subconscious mind, which comes to attack you at your quiet moment without your permission, that the trauma that is disturbing people are feelings they have themselves uh, brought upon themselves through the social media they consume. Mm -hmm. Social media has become now a threat to mental health because some of what you see disturbs you in your quiet moments because with, with or without your permission, it is planted in your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. What do I tell Kenyans? Stand guard at the door of your mind. Mm -hmm. The two senses to watch for are the sense of sight and the sense of hearing. Mm -hmm. What you are hearing and what you are seeing is getting implanted in your mind without your permission and at your very quiet moment will come and become the trauma that is bothering you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So be careful um, on what you expose yourself to. That is correct. What you watch, what mm -hmm. you read, mm -hmm. you know, what you just generally spend your time uh, mm -hmm. consuming in terms of content. This can actually, without even you knowing, without affect you your mind. 100%. All right. Mm -hmm. you, th there's this insistence on counseling. Even as we, you, we are marking this Mental Health Awareness Month, there's been a lot of talk about the significance mm -hmm. of counseling. But let's break it down, mm -hmm. Anthony. Um, what should somebody expect when they finally get convinced that probably they need counseling, how does it look like, and what are some of the things that um, they will be getting there in terms of value or whatever, just for somebody who has never even thought about going for counseling. Mm. To them, all they mm. knew is that what one counseling, mm. those who cannot handle things for themselves. Mm. What should they, should they know about counseling? Um, I'll speak from where I come from and from where I gained the knowledge and skills of counseling from, which is a money counseling and training center. And um, counseling, as I've said, is, a, is, is, is the simplest thing and the simplest thing that can resolve a lot of issues that are in us and out of us. Um, in counseling, all you need to do is just present yourself. And this is, you have to get a professional, somebody who is professional, a professional counselor. And uh, as I've mentioned, in counseling when you are going, don't expect to be, to be given solutions. Don't expect to be given, um, to, be, to, to be advised. Because as a, as a therapist, mine is just to, to, to listen, to give you a listening ear. And as a therapist, counselors, we, have, we, are, we are given skills, we have given techniques that will help us to support you in that journey. So you're not giving me, you're not telling me, go do this, it will work. No. This will fix your problem. Because <laughs> what happens, somebody should when I tell you tomorrow, you'll come back to me. <laughs> and you say, you know, Anthony, you told me to do this. Mm -hmm. But as I've said, we all have solutions within us. 
all solutions with our, of our problems is there within us. It's just that we are not able and we get stuck. You know, even, even not being in a position to resolve, you have a project. Let's say I want to, I want to bring it. To bring, to bring it out from the norm of uh, addiction and all that. You have a business. You don't know how to deal. You have a project which is coming up. You are looking for financing. You are looking on how to complete the project. That is enough to take you to a therapy room. Mm -hmm. That is enough to take you to a therapy room. And the therapist, it does not necessarily need to be a business person or knows business. It's just by using the skills and the techniques that we are taught, that we help you to see the solutions and to resolve the issues that you are going through. Mm -hmm. And also sometimes, sometimes we don't need to be told anything. Sometimes, most of the time, we just need somebody to sit and listen. Just that is enough therapy. Mm -hmm. Sit and listen. And we have a very big problem again, issue with stigmatization. Yeah. And, and th th that, is, that is one of our biggest, that, that is another big problem. And uh, we are seeing people that are going down in addiction, people that um, things are not working, your business has. So that stigmatization again is it. It brings up the level of, um, of, um, of depression. Mm -hmm. So it is something also we need to be aware of. We need to be aware of, as you have asked, that the people that I'm talking to, I'll meet somebody in Mwambi, hey, ni kubaya. Then he tells me, hey, we ujui. Kwangu ndiyo kubaya zaidi. You see, we need, we, need, we need as a people to learn to get to that place, to listen to someone. Mm. Because sometimes we just want somebody to listen to us so that we can be able to unlock the solutions that you have within us. All right, all right. Mm. I like what you have said about stigma. And, and, and Dakshari, one of the things that you really are really strongly advocating for is what we call destigmatizing the issues of mental health. Um, even as you take us through the level of stigma and how it has impacted us, how do we then change the narrative? What are some of the things that we need to do to make to normalize this conversation? Like he's saying, let it be as normal as I want to start a project, I'm having a challenge, let me walk into a counseling room and let me get counseled without feeling like there's something wrong with that. How do we get to that stage where we have normalized issues of, no, of mental health and, and eliminated the stigma in the society? Thank you very much, Safin, for that question. And uh, I echo Motua's words that it is true, stigma is standing in the way of access yeah. to mental health services. I take a recent case that we watched on uh, popular media where we, are, we had a gentleman who was a journalist called Kimani. And Kimani f fell into some uh, mental health issues and chose to go, um, I mean, was unfortunately involved in uh, uh, drug abuse and it has precipitated a condition that is known as psychosis. And Kemani is uh, one of the patients who has brought uh, a lot of uh, fire to the mental health conversation because a lot of Kenyans knew him and a lot of Kenyans uh, bought into the story. I personally did as well. He was a journalist with uh, the citizen uh, with this media house. And uh, several people went in to uh, assist him with one, uh, the former governor, Mike Sonko, really popularizing uh, that incident. So it will take a lot of public advocacy by people in positions of authority to normalize the conversation mm. that mental health is an illness like any other illness. Mm. And I've said it before, malaria is an illness and so is mental health. They are mm. all fall under the same gambit, illnesses. Why are you giving one uh, uh, such negative connotations and then the other is so acceptable that you could say it anywhere? Mm. It is very possible for somebody to admit that they have malaria in a public place and nobody will judge them. In fact, we will feel sorry for them. But the same couldn't happen if somebody was to, per se, express that they have a mental health condition. I have depression. Everybody wonders, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. So we will normalize this conversation through a lot of advocacy, like we are doing today. And I, I would like to thank uh, Citizen uh, Television and, uh, of course, Safin yourself for giving us an audience and the time to tell Kenyans that we have to normalize the conversation on mental health. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, as we sit in our homes, we know each one of us knows a family, a close family member, an uncle, a brother, or a friend, a neighbor, who is affected in one way or another. This is what you should tell them. There is help, and it is upon them to seek the help. At the Madari National Teaching and Referral Hospital, right now, we have the most advanced team of psychiatrists ready to receive and handle any case 
that is incident upon them. There's a lot of capacity <coughs> building to the counties. We have posted, our uh, psychiatrists have been posted and other mental health personnel to all the counties so that we can make sure that at least in every county there is a, 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 the, the requisite uh, human resources for mental health as it pertains our practice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, as we're about to wrap up this conversation, um, I want us to talk about the cost implication that, that, that comes with, to, with accessing mental health services. People feel that it's actually a very expensive affair to even go for professional counseling because that is what we are <coughs> waiting for. But is it <coughs> where you sit? Uh, not really. And um, weighing the cost implication and my health. I, I, I would not see how that would be at the same place. My personal health, my mental health, which will affect my, my business, my work, my career, because that is where it will start. And maybe I will be looking at it. I, 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 at a money counseling center, it's, it's like 3,000 for a professional. And, and there are places also will get cheaper than that. But would I peg that to my own, own work? Because my mental health will affect my business and will affect my relationship. It will affect my family. So it is a cost that is worth to guard with your own life. Mm -hmm. Because it is, you, we all need it. We all need it. We really have to come to the awareness that it is something that we need. Don't wait to get to that point that now you are dealing with addiction. Let us start dealing with it at the point of it is an anxiety. I didn't sleep tonight. I woke up at 2. You know, I woke up, to, I woke up uh, at 3 a.m. And I should be sleeping. But people are sleeping. But me, I'm awake. Mm -hmm. That in itself is a problem. You're not awake because you want to be awake. No. And, and it is what, what, what we've mentioned. It is something that is in your subconscious mind. And you might find even something that is eating you again. I'll take you back to your childhood or to your growing up. There are traumas that affect us when we are grown up. We are grown ups that we picked in our childhood. Mm -hmm. And there are things that we can process in a therapy room. All right. Doctor, you get to give us the final word as we are about to finalize this month of awareness, yeah? What would be your clarion call? My clarion call is that uh, we need to seek as a people something we call mental fitness. Mental fitness is equal to physical fitness, as I will explain it. That uh, over the course of your life, circumstances and events take you on what we call a sine wave kind of formation where there are ups and there are downs ups and downs mm. and everybody goes through all these uh, highs and lows and uh, for you to develop uh, mental fitness mental fitness is a situation whereby no matter what comes your way whether it is an up or a down you will be able to uh, uh, participate actively in a, in a manner that will not be detrimental to your mental health mm. I am preaching mental fitness Mental fit fitness, are you mentally fit? Yes. That's the question we should be asking you. Are you mentally fit? Whatever you're watching us from, think about it. Love yourself enough to uh, just ha have self-awareness, first of all. If you're okay, fine. Check, check regularly to ensure that you're doing well mentally. But if you're not, then it's time for you to take proactive steps to get help. Then there is help everywhere like my panelists have shared with us this morning, and you can be able to go back to your um, you know, state of mental fitness like Dr. Gitonga has told us. So I've been hosting this morning, Dr. Alfred Gitonga, consultant psychiatrist, and also Anthony Mutua, mental health coach, Asante Nisana for creating time for us. And that's how we wrap this conversation up. But don't go too far. We will also just be taking this um, to another segment where we will also be talking about matters concerning health, but menstruation, um, health, hygiene, that is actually something that we'll be delving into. Remember yesterday was the um, World Menstruation uh, Day and of course a lot that has gone into discussing how to accord this right to women and girls. I'll be hosting Senator Gloria Roba as we talk about her advocacy on ensuring that this is accorded to girls and also what the government has done so far. That conversation coming up in a bit.